Are you living under curses? Are you living under karma? Or are you living under blessing? Hey, it's Lucas Scrobot, and you're listening to Weaver and Loom. Welcome to Weaver and Loom. Weaver and Loom is a podcast that is a 7 to 12 minute short daily episode, Sunday through Thursday. It's part of the Own the Future podcast where we talk about change making. What is a change maker? How do we affect and impact the world around us for the better? And how do we do that? We do that through understanding our story, understanding our craft, and knowing and learning and applying how we can own the future. And Weaver and Loom is a segment where we talk about how we can connect back to our purpose, back to our destiny, back to our work, because the world is so full of information that causes us paralysis, that disconnects us from actually doing the work and actually making a change. Instead, we sit and we ponder and we think and we feel good about ourselves thinking that we're doing something, but we're not. So this is a podcast that engages us to be change makers in our world because I really believe that that is what you want and I know that is what I want. I want to be a change maker. I want to be someone that makes a difference and leaves a a dent or an influence, an impact on the relationships around me, on the world around me, on the things that I have been given to oversee. So that's what Own the Future is. That's what Weaver and Loom is if you're new to the show. And today we're talking about three things. We're talking about curses. We're talking about reaping and sowing, not really karma. Karma is a little bit different. Talking about karma, reaping and sowing. And we're talking about living under blessings. So are you living underneath a curse? Are you saying things to yourself like, I just get dealt a bad hand? Well, that's just the story of my life where, oh, that always happens, where you do all the right things, but for some reason, you get all the wrong results. You put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the hours, but it seems like you are always getting negative results where everyone else is getting positive results. So many of us are actually very superstitious, very spiritual, believing in in jinn, in demons, in oppression, in spiritual... Uh, uh, demonic influences in our life. I don't know how, I mean, we, we believe in the Zodiac. We believe in astrology. There's, we're very spiritual people and view the world through very spiritual lenses. Most of the people that I talk to, they, they believe in the spirit realm. They believe in positive, good energies and negative energies. And those energies, those spirits, those jinn, they really can affect us. And oftentimes, it's not necessarily that there's an actual spirit or an actual dark negative energy that is attacking or oppressing us, but is that we're living underneath a curse, where no matter how much good we do, how much right we do, we're always getting the wrong result and the wrong response. So ask yourself, do you feel like you're living underneath a curse? If so, we got to fix that. That's the first thing we got to do. We got to break off those curses. We have to move out of that mindset, out of those belief systems, out of those things that we have come into agreement with. When someone speaks words over us or puts a hex on us and we come underneath that, we have to break that off. We have to step out of that into what we'll talk about today, into blessing. The the second phase second tier of of life that we can live in, an echelon that we can live in in life is reaping and sowing. Now, I know in the beginning I said the word karma, but karma is a little different than reaping and sowing. In reaping and sowing, it's if you do good, you get good. If you do bad, you get bad. Karma is a actual system of where if you do bad, you will pay for it in this life or the next life. And if you don't pay for it, then you'll pay for it later. And so the the weird thing about karma is that if you are doing good for someone who is suffering, you will actually get bad karma 
and not good karma because you are hurting their karma because they're in the midst of their suffering, which is allowing them to pay for something bad that they did, which means they'll have to pay for that again later and they'll actually not reincarnate to a better world. So that's a weird thing about karma. I actually don't like the word karma. I don't believe in it, but I do like the thought and the idea of reaping and sowing, which is what you plant in your field, what you sow in your field, the thoughts, the actions, your input, your watering, all that, you will reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. You will reap what you sow. So that is really this self-reliant, it's all on me. It's all on you. Whatever I put in, I get out. And if I don't put in, I won't get out. Now, this is really the place that many of us live today. Much of the secular world lives in this space of reaping and sowing. And I have to confess that most of my thinking falls in that. It falls, it's on me, it's my responsibility. Whatever I put in is what I'm gonna get out of it. I can't rely on anyone else. I can't trust anyone else. I have to be the responsible party to affect change in my own life. And I think in some degrees, it's really healthy. It's, it's a good quality and trait to be the one that's taking that responsibility. But there is a third and even better way to live your life. And I think it's the one that we all want to be under, to be in, to somehow manifest and figure out in our life. And that is living under blessing. Now, you know those people, you probably have those people in your life where whatever they touch, it just turns to gold. It's like magical. It's like the person walks in the room, says all the wrong things, breaks all the rules, does everything wrong, but somehow they get the contract or somehow everyone loves them. They do make every bad and wrong decision and somehow they always get the perfect and right outcome. It's as if they have some sort of magical gift and ability that that makes them like Superman or a genie or something, I don't know, magical, but that is what blessing is. Great example of blessing is inheritance. If you or if your friend received an inheritance from their father, their mother, their great grandparents, their grandparents, and all of a sudden one day they have, you know, a thousand real in their bank account. Next day they have 250,000 real in their bank account. Boom. That is blessing. They didn't work for it. They didn't do anything for it. It's just something that was passed down generation to generation. Or you see someone who is a third, fourth generation fisherman or third, fourth generation businesswoman, and they are just so gifted and talented at what they do. And you're like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, where does that come from? They're like, I don't know. It just, you know, just comes to me naturally. That is a blessing that they are living in, that they are walking in something they did not attain on their own, but it's their parents or their grandparents' labor that they are actually reaping the fruit of, reaping the benefit of today and now. Another way, so there's there's the generational way that we can step underneath blessing by honoring our parents, by honoring our grandparents, by looking what's in our family line that we can step into through honor. Another way is via proximity. If you want to achieve something, if you want to be under a kind of blessing that that person that you hate that does everything wrong and somehow everything right still happens to them, if you get near them, if you learn from them, and we talked about this a few weeks ago on the episode of how you are the the sum average of your five friends, how who you hang out with is who you become. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. We talked about this. But by getting around people who have achieved what you want to achieve, you will be able to draft, if you will, off them. By getting behind them, they will have cleared a path for you to achieve what they've done in less time and with more success. And this is what teachers do. Teachers make a way so that those who come behind them can supersede them. And this is what every parent wants. Every parent wants their kids to end up doing better than them in life. This is blessing. 
Another way that we can step into blessing that we actually maybe don't realize is that many of much of the world around us today is actually things that we did not work for. We actually live in an enormous amount of blessing right now, you and I. The fact that we are listening to this or watching this is evidence that we're living underneath blessing. We're living underneath the blessing of electricity, of modern medicine, of of travel, being able to get on a plane and be anywhere in the world within 12, 13, 14 hours. We did not work for that, but we are actually reaping the benefit for it because there have been men and women who have persevered and brought entire generation breakthrough in technology that ends up trickling down to everyone where we're living underneath an enormous amount of blessing that we did nothing for. I have done nothing to get internet access. I just pay a little bit of money. But from it, I'm able to walk in an incredible amount of blessing and do an incredible amount of things that I would not be able to do had it not been for someone else getting breakthrough for me in communication. So then there's another area that I think all of us want to step into where we no longer are the one that's receiving blessing from whether it's generational, whether it's through proximity, through coming underneath and attaching ourselves to a mentor or to someone who's achieved something that we desperately want to achieve or has something that we want to learn how to have, whether it's a skill, a talent, a gifting, a personality trait. And then finally, there's the the, the mass general blessing that we all live under. But there's a fourth, which is that we might become uh, a spearhead, if you will, that we might become uh, one who brings breakthrough and blessing for other people. When we are the ones that stand up and we have a breakthrough in innovation, when we have a breakthrough in technology, when we build a network, when we connect with people on a heart level and build something that is that has legacy to it, other people can come underneath the thing that we have personal breakthrough in and our personal breakthrough actually becomes a corporate breakthrough. The things that we achieve on a personal level actually then becomes something that the entire society can benefit from. And that's where each and every one of us wants to be, wants to go. It's where we are going as change makers. It's what we are pursuing as change makers. My challenge for you today is this. Don't be so caught up in relying on yourself. There is a there is this exaltation or uh we put it on a pedestal. We put becoming a self-made millionaire on a pedestal, a self-made woman, a, a, a self-made man that we are reliant on no one, that we're independent. There's this thing that of, of independence. I don't need to rely on anyone. I just rely on myself. This ideology, which is actually the ideology of North Korea, is this ideology of independence where you don't need to rely on anyone but just rely on yourself that disconnects us from blessing and it causes us to remain stuck in reaping and sowing where we'll never be able to leapfrog and achieve because we're always so caught up in the fact that I did it, that I achieved this, that it's me, myself, and I, I'm reliant and independent on myself and I don't want to have to rely on someone else. But I want to challenge you today to think of your life and and look, what are the areas that you have been so self-reliant and so proud that you've actually cut yourself off from blessing, that you've actually cut yourself off from all of a sudden, boom, having 250 million reals in your bank account. Because instead of you relying on yourself, you stepped into a realm 
of whether it's generational or societal or by proximity of blessing that you are walking in someone else's breakthrough. Why? So that you can go on and supersede them and bring breakthrough for other people, for generations that are to come. So how can you move out of reaping and sowing and begin to step in to blessing today? How can you step in to not relying on your own merit, to not relying on what you did and how well you did it, but realizing that someone else did it better and relying and hanging, hinging your life on the corporate blessing that has come from someone else's personal breakthrough. Thank you for listening to Weaver and Loom. I'm Lucas Scrobot. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them here on Weaver and Loom. Stay tuned next week. We're actually answering a few questions on change, on what do you do when you're changing and others aren't? How do you change? How do you deal with people who are resistant to change? And I think it's going to be a great week, great episodes lined up for you. And please, if you enjoyed this episode, if you were challenged to think differently, please share it with one friend that you want to think differently with. And as always, I'm Lucas Grobot, and you're listening to Weaver and Loom, where destiny is woven. Mm-hmm.